At this point in the Wee scandal, after the Kielberger brothers testified together, why was that in the first place? And then the finance minister and the prime minister testified before the House of Commons Standing Committee on Finance. Surely the Liberals must realize that they have ridden their shiny pony as far as he can take them. Between the three, there is still much confusion about what went on, and many questions. Chief among them is why we started work on the project several weeks before the cabinet meeting to even consider authorizing it, and days before the Prime Minister said he even heard about it. Why would any organization start on a project, including the apparent hiring of 450 people, only to have to lay them off after the contract was cancelled. It defies logic, unless they had advanced notice it was coming. Thursday's testimony before the committee is only the third time a Prime Minister has testified before a parliamentary committee. Joe Clark did on spending estimates when he led a minority government in 1979, and Stephen Harper did to discuss Senate reform. Neither of them were under investigation at the time either. Trudeau's brand is badly damaged, and not just because he appeared before the committee looking unkempt and sloppy. During his questioning, his credibility was in tatters by the time he was done, and he apologized yet again for not recusing himself from the cabinet table before they considered authorizing the spending of nearly a billion dollars on an organization seen as friendly to the Trudeau family and the Liberal Party. On Friday, Trudeau gave a press conference, ostensibly to make a COVID-19 announcement. He apologized again and said that he should have been aware there would be a, quote, perception, unquote, of a conflict of interest if he did not recuse himself. Yet he did not do that, feeding just that perception and the resulting time from the announcement to the cancellation, the howls of outrage were huge and have resulted in uh, the Ethics Commissioner's investigations both into the Prime Minister and now the Finance Minister, the two most powerful positions in government. The other aspect of all of this is the timeline of events. It does not add up after the Kielberger's testimony, or Morneau's, or Trudeau's for that matter. Someone in all of this is not telling the truth. The Prime Minister also essentially testified he didn't know what was going on in his own government and how the bureaucracy seemed to do what they wanted. Can the Prime Minister recover from all of this? We don't yet know, but apparently he has taken the next two weeks off. He has, after all, only appeared in the House for ten days this calendar year. He must be exhausted. A politician relies on the perception of the electorate, not just the reality of what he has done. After all, we know the Liberal government of Justin Trudeau has not accomplished much, and the perception of his competence is in shreds. Perhaps, on his vacation, he will consider his position before there is a palace coup much like what the UK Conservatives did to end Margaret Thatcher's tenure. All politicians have a shelf life. Justin Trudeau seems to have reached the end of his. Only time will tell though, but even the staunchest supporters seem to be now wavering. For True North, I'm Leo Knight.